OK, quick Monday afternoon radar update. So just going to quickly buzz through the markets here. So we a theme at my uh, trading bases has been, you know, small caps have been uh, consolidating. If you look at the transports in the US and the Russell, those markets have, have been basically basing out transports. If you're Dow theorists like I am, you know, leader doesn't lead all the time. And uh, Russell small caps. So basically, what what we've had is we we've had really good action in small cap stocks, and uh, in the UK, small cap growth stocks especially have been, been you know everything's been really working really well. You know, stocks are acting like stocks. You know, pullbacks and breakouts and just doing the thing. You know, really orderly. Um, out there in uh, you know the, in the in the sort of share trading sort of feeds you can hear a pin drop can't you you know it's it's absolute silence and um you know that's pretty normal you know it, we've got this wall of worry and it's always the same you know the the best markets tend to be the you know the the quiet melty orderly markets you know and people find it really hard to sort of you know, just trade the plan in, in a market like that and all the feeds are telling you why the market should come down. So I'll just kind of talk about that a little bit. You know, the, the common consensus is always, oh, yeah, you know, if, and the video comes down, everything comes down. And, you know, in my world of doing, doing this for a long time, you know, so the NASDAQ can just go on its own correction, do its thing. Rotation always happens. We've definitely got rotation. I'll just jump into the these markets and I'll just go transports here first and we'll just zoom these charts out. Always zoom them out and, and go and have a look at my, my feeds on, on the share scope. You know, I've been talking about these things in in the uh, articles I do. I do a market update. I don't need to do them very often, but you know, we're just going sideways in a big base on, on the transports here and Look at the action in the transports. You know, nice bit of volume coming in there. What about the Russell? We've been talking about this consolidation. It broke out of this base, reverse vol base, share scope articles, and first pullback, and then it just based out again. And it's broken out of this base again. Let's go and have a look at some other small cap markets. You know the UK small caps. We've got we got this base base cheat here below a bigger level, um, and it broke out. And it did a normal pullback. It could have come deeper, and it's on a high high. Wow, amazing! You know, and this is why the markets have been so good. But the the, the thing I'm trying to get across here is, you know, know the lanes you do business in. Just just zoom out those charts. Stop looking at the FTSE 100, thinking it's it's you know. An important market for what we do it isn't you know um move into the you know just look at all these markets together as a whole and, and i do it every day so you know you give yourself a good feel of what's going on and um you, you can go and follow the face uh, my twitter feed and have a look at a few of the charts i've dropped there you know it's an interesting area for us and this is the aim market you know and um it doesn't mean it will go straight up. It could go down. But, you know, we just deal with the now, you know. And uh, when something breaks out of this range, this base here, and then it consolidates over the last how many, you know, month and a half, two months, pulls back into this base area, it's an obvious area where those, those small cap stocks are a little bit lower in the small cap risk tiers might start getting a little bit of interest because the growth stocks, the small cap growth stocks as, as a group have been doing fine. Um, so that's kind of my point there, you know. It doesn't really matter, you know, the, the Dow's breaking out of a base here. The S&P and the NASDAQ, the Qs and SPY have been on this real straight line move. And we talked about this normal pullback into this level here. And... Um, these things can have a rest and ro rotation always happens in a new bull market, in a wall of worry. It always happens and it seems like it's only just starting to happen in the US and uh, 
the UK small caps, though we've been invested for, for a long time. But rotation will happen in our own portfolio. So I'm going to talk a little bit on, you know, the makeup of a portfolio and, and you know, just just I'll jump onto W7L for you here because it will be the talk of this week because or last week and this week because it's just, you know, stocks move up and down. So I'll just bring AT up as well. You know, stocks move up and down. They have to correct on the journey. And these were two of the biggest, uh, well, the most obvious ones for us at my site. And obviously, the, the, for many at my site, these two are big, heavy positions. So, individually, they have quite a lot of risk to stop. So, what... You know, in, in my articles and, and you know, I'm I'm a trend follower. I, I'm a growth stock investor and I went I manage them in a trend following style. So I'm not a classical trend follower, you know, long short and I'm a stock picker, I'm I'm really systematic in, in what I do. I'm not automatic, I'm systematic. <laughs> and uh so my method you know, I turn up every day. My mythology, <laughs> mythology, met methodology, you know, is to turn up every day and I have a methodology of the stocks I like to trade and how I trade them. And, I've, you know, I've got a, a management plan for every trade I'm in. And I've got a, you know, an overall portfolio uh, management plan. And it all blends together. It's all, all these modules you have to put to, together to have, a, you know, parts parts of the plan, like. And um, one of the important parts of this plan is is just how much you risk. And, uh, you know, as, as a stock starts to trend, you know, that risk to stop, because I trail a stock behind it, the risk to stop gets larger and larger and larger. Now that's that's risk to stop. It, it it's not risk against the close balance. It's risk to stop. So the opposite of that is if I added something on the way down, you know, the risk against the close balance would would be huge. The gap risk would put me in a hole. Uh, when you've got when you've got a huge winner, it's cushion. It's not risk. It's cushion, and. The risk to stop is calculated, and I shared the share scope art article I did did last year. I shared it last week actually because uh, you know it's been a popular sort of theme at my my chat group, just talking about W seven L and and you know the huge profits on the table over the last week. Or so, so the time to adjust on these things is when that risk to stop is huge. You know, say say you know I have a basic you know five percent of portfolio is probably gonna be be kind of hard for a lot of people uh if you give back five percent on one stock against your portfolio before it stops you out me i've got a very strong stomach i i am a you know to quote jerry parker tre trend following plus nothing you know i i like to put these in lane and just let them play out and uh yeah, you know, I'm not against top slicing some of these things. I've got huge risk, risk to stop in some of these stocks. Um, I'll, I'll jump onto W7L. I've got huge risk to stop in this. And uh, I've got a very strong stomach as well. But this is the area where most people would be, you know, experiencing that, that, that huge risk to stop. And they will be... You know, at some point, you know, everyone's got a a level where they go, well, this is just too much. I can't, I can't have this much give back to my stop area. It's nothing to do with waiting with me either. You know, it's it's more about sort of just the psychological. I like to put things in lane and try and follow them. Now I know in my head where my stop is. This stop could come all the way into that area and be very normal. And I'll just show you that because I'm going to bring over Fever Tree, and and these today W7L. I start like W7L today. This 
on on these days in fever tree it, it was all everyone was having the same emotions you know these are eight percent down days i think I, I put in here and you know one day there two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven these these i think i'm pretty sure these are eight percent falls on a day or thereabouts not on a pullback on just one day so you know there's 12 there in in, in one trend is it 12 one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven there's eleven there i count in one one trend and that's not you know this look at this one here and then it continued to come all the way back into the 10 month so what am i trying to get across here on these days here people made emotional decisions now if they were short-term momentum traders that's probably a good decision but if they were long-term primary trend followers or, or investors obviously they were bad decisions weren't they and um you know you're never going to get it right but the best barometer for lightening up if you do lighten up is you know your own risk to stop and you should know that that off by heart you know psychologically from past trades you should know your level of risk to stop it will be draw down against it'll be in r it'll be in percent it'll be draw down against the portfolio you know the percent one isn't really that relevant but in r or in draw down against close balance of portfolio why close balance that's the important one that's the one what puts you in the hole if you, if you take too much risk and you know something gaps against you the closed balance is the one you have to dig yourself out of the open unrealized balance well that one's not that important you know it's the system exits are the ones what create the equity curve not the uh i'm waving my hands around in the office here not the uh not the unrealized PL. so yeah just some things to think about now what else i'm going to do here for you this is very normal action guess what it could roll over and stop me out but it is normal action i've just shown you that i'll just um add at to this graph for you so when when you're trading a portfolio the problem with looking at your p l and looking at individual trades too closely is that you bank them you, you're you're already spending those profits you know in your head that's it, it, it's hard not to do so i don't have p i'd i'd just look at the r multiples myself but um and the overall portfolio is is key here because for a, a strong basket of growth stocks and i'll just show you two heavy positions in my site my site as a, as a group will have heavy positions in in both of these AT correcting if you're looking at that individually you're probably micromanaging it but if you're but but in the same time W7L is offsetting that so your portfolio is is balancing out now what have we got here we've got W7 correcting in the same time AT or whatever strong stock you've got so is offsetting that so as it stands today i'm pretty flat on the day up a bit down a bit the, the the morning started fantastically well and then you know a couple of stocks of uh, well one stock has <laughs> gone into correction being this one so it offsets it it's not about the individual stock and it's a big um it's it's a it's a really big step to to get past this especially when you start investing because you want to trade you, you want to have a system what how you enter and exit and do that and you'll do it on one stock first and it might be a loser and it might be a loser again and you might just abandon it but but that, that happens as well but you get something working and then you've got to you know you've got to have a portfolio trading the methodology rather than just going from one individual stock to the next individual stock 
to actually achieve a balance in the portfolio. And, you know, from, from my point of view, I'm a growth stock. I pick the best stocks with the best growth. I don't value anything. I look at the, the growth and if the growth's turning down, guess what? The valuation's going to go up. Yeah, I, I understand that, but it's not going down because of valuation. It's going down because of growth. So, you know, that's, I, I always put my stocks in the best. I try and get a slingshot of growth. And then I move from there into basically just managing those. So once they go through that, that year of growth and, and they're on a totally new year's, uh, fundamentally a, a new year of uh, results they're trading towards, guess what? It's a different growth playing field. It might even be a dip in growth, but I put them into into my management, my trend following sort of management style. And I just let, the, let them do that because they might go to sleep for six months. I don't want to discount the right hand edge because if a stock's had fantastic growth, it's been getting orders in, it's been, you know, executing. And just because it's had a really good year and it's the next year's a little bit light, I don't want to discount everything. You know, this, this company can obviously do good stuff. And to just say, well, that's the end of this growth stock because it's just dipping in its growth. That would be discounting the right hand edge. It will be discounting future growth and future orders and future sales. So, so that's a big no, no for me. I, I put them in a lane and sometimes I'll sell out some and buy into others. You know, I will do that, but uh, I try not to do, I try not to do, I keep my trade tampering to a, a limit, you know, as l low as possible. Operator error will be in the mix. Uh, the methodology makes me plenty of money with operator error in the mix. Me, I'm the operator. I, I make the errors. How many times have I looked at a stock what I've just top sliced to, to buy another one? The one I buy has stopped me out and the, and the one I top sliced just continued on its journey, costing me double. So yeah, you know, we haven't got a crystal ball, but that's just thoughts of just portfolio balance and management. And uh, obviously I will not give you any rules there. I've, I've just give you a, a wider sort of um, something to make you think. So, okay, I'll leave it there.